Thank you for joining us on another quarantined episode of Chairside Gaming. Joining me as usual is my co-host, Ricky. What's going on, guys? <laughs> hey, for anybody that's brand new to Chairside Gaming, Chairside Gaming is a show that comes out twice a month um, on irregular weeks because we <laughs> apparently are terrible at keeping track of weeks. Um, but we do come out and uh, it's just we. Us two guys, we come on and we talk about video games. So how's it been going, Ricky? What's what's new? Um, today we are doing the episode within Risk of Rain 2 after trying two other games that just did not want to work, man. Today, today's just not our day, man. Like, <laughs> yeah, no. It's, uh, it's highly interesting how we try to do other fun stuff, but they don't want to work with us. So you know what? Screw it. Risk of Manning. They have been wonderful to us, so we will stay faithful to them for the time being. <laughs> for the time being, you make it sound like <laughs> it's, it's for now, but not who knows for how long. No. All right, Ricky. So we we have a lot to talk about, um, mainly of Xbox, dude. So like we postponed the episode because of the Xbox event. Like realistically, like the, the news hasn't been there hasn't been too much. Like you know major you know in my, in my eyes it's been like oh my god groundbreaking that you know we need to like pay attention to but like we did get that event from xbox today um that took place kind of showing us what games they're they're looking well, well first of all what did you think ricky like what do you think of the presentation this is you know this is xbox answer to how they're gonna handle you know giving announcements on a you know console launching year where we're dealing with COVID and everybody's home. So wh what do you think? Like, do, do you think they did a good job? Like, I will say overall, they did a good job. Now, was it what we were expecting? <clears throat> Not a hundred percent. Um, and what I mean by that is whenever they were mentioning, Oh yeah, we're going to do this, blah, 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 blah. To me, it made it sound like they were going to show us a lot more, you know, hands-on gameplay, like, you know, show me this, show me that, and it was more of pre-render video within the, you know, within the <coughs> console, but it was more of cinematic and not the actual gameplay like we expected it to be. So, like, here's my question on that, too, because, <clears throat> you know, we're getting to a point within these consoles that... What, what really is the difference between cinematic and gameplay? You know what I mean? Like, well, it, it's all kind of one and the same to some extent. So, is it, you know, because at the same time, you're you're looking at all these systems, all this ray tracing that they're they're announcing. You you would kind of think, you know, we're not going to be seeing much of a difference, really. I mean, like I, I would think we're not gonna, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like c considering the capabilities that they have you know from a video perspective i would think that it, it wouldn't be that big of a deal like well, the difference well, i kind of feel like it's i feel like they're one in the same at this point to a certain extent yes visually um there is a similar comparison not a you know it's not apples to apples just because with a cinematic effect, you can render and scale the video quality to be a lot higher than the actual gameplay. And when it comes to gameplay, um, you, at least for me, I was trying to see how the game actually reacts whenever you're playing, you know, buttons to joystick movement with an actual controller. How is the game you know, recognizing all those inputs and anything. Is there any potential lags? Is there, you know, any any little sight differences that you truly cannot see within a cinematic um, style? And, you know, that was unfortunately one of the things that was not really provided um, to us. Um, one of their big uh, components was like, oh, yeah, we're going to have, you know, a shot of you know the new Assassin's Creed Valhalla but it was a very short clip of it you know we really didn't get to see much in there but the one thing that they did give us was hey stay tuned to July because in July is when we're gonna have you know our more of our in-depth the first um, party yeah yeah so 
But like overall, what, what do you think they did for 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 the overall video? Okay, so the the gameplay is not great, but like comparing it to you know what Nintendo does, compare it to a direct, compare it to what PlayStation has been doing now with the state of plays. Well, how do how did this land? Did, did they they nail it? Like, do you think that this is the effective way that plays that? I'm no, sorry, that Xbox goes forward when it comes to providing information. Like, yes, do you I'm, think this is a solution to how they do E3? Like, you know, this is because I mean, it was nice, and 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 I'll tell you, it's quaint to kind of see that you know, it was filmed with a lot of. Oh my God, I'm getting my butt whipped in this game today. Well, we're on extremely hard mode too, so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> For no, those but watching. still. <clears throat> but still, um, so no. it's one of those. Yeah, well, you, you, you know what I mean. Yeah, no, uh, I mean you got to put it this way too. You know, whenever we've seen uh, Nintendo Direct and all that stuff, we are seeing that from a, a much higher production um, value. And what I mean by that is, you know, we're we weren't not in the middle of COVID nineteen as we are right now. You're talking about they had to do all of this, you know, game captures, all of those, you know, footages of everybody talking all separately and tie everything back together you know they weren't able to go professionally and you know and have an actual production team pre-record a lot of the informations that they were providing because if you notice all the all on that video is pretty much all pre-recorded there, there was nothing live within it um overall well, no, they did a really no good point. job they did a really good job you know they tied everything together beautifully um at least they showed some you know some of the games that are gonna be coming out um one of the things that they kept pushing forward was some of the features that they are gonna be um doing with the next console and that is that um if you buy the game on Xbox One, you know, you'll have that game on the new Xbox Series X, which is a beautiful feature at the moment. The smart delivery really is an awesome feature. And I love the fact that it was advertised pretty much throughout all the games that they showed. You know what I mean? Like, it, it they're kind of guaranteeing you that no matter what, you buy this game, you're going to get it. And it's kind of awesome. And it worries me a little bit. Um, simply because PlayStation doesn't have anything like that so far. They have not come out and said, um, you know, th this is what we're going to do. You know, where they have not come out and said, it, if you buy Cyberpunk 2077 on the PlayStation 4, you're going to automatically get it on the PlayStation 5. And that's already a promise that Xbox has made. So it's, it's kind of one of those scenarios where it's concerning um, simply because what it when are they going to announce something but it's nice to know that out of all the xbox stuff like right now honestly and we've talked about this i've i've decided I'm, i am going to get an xbox uh as well for next console um cycle but you know i've been debating back and forth on getting an xbox one x because it it would still be a valuable console simply because you know for a few years they're not they're, whatever they put out are going it's going to come out on both and with smart delivery, you know, I'm already going to have it whenever I do decide to finally upgrade to the Series X. No, yeah, we definitely are not going to have a shortage of games. Um, yeah, they might not be 100%, you know, full titles. Console you know, exclusives. Yeah, exactly, for launch period. But, you know, we're, we're going to have a nice um, start to the new console system. Yeah, it's not going to be your traditional, like, here's, here's 20 game. games at launch, but it's going to be, like, here's, like, 200 games that you can still play using that console. Yep. And, and because it's that console, it's going to already be somewhat optimized to, you know, perform better. Yep. No, yeah, there's going to be, it's going to have a bunch of different features that's, that right now it's very, very appealing. And I hope, you know, PlayStation has an answer. <laughs> yeah you and i both brother so with all the xbox stuff that's come out lately we've also seen they they showed their new logo have you seen the new logo yes <clears throat> what do you think of the new logo it seems very simplistic it is but you know they're also making their console very simplistic 
there's not much <laughs> to their console this go around, so it basically fits it's just it. a tower. Yeah, it, it fits it like a glove at the moment. <laughs> but I I do like it, you know the. I feel overall, that they. They, everybody's gone fairly safe this new this new console generation. Yeah, PlayStation yeah. Five is also not very you know what I mean? Like the logo for PlayStation Five is not turning any heads either. No, um I think the only thing you know that was like a little bit more like a head turn or like, oh, you know, they're they're feeling sassy or they're not sassy, but you know, they're feeling brave was changing <laughs> the name so. of their controller, you know, going from a DualShock to a dual sense. And I think mm. that's basically the only like bold statement any of the console systems have done at the moment <laughs> <clears throat> i mean at least of what they've shown so far yeah. you know, there's there's stuff that we'll we'll ultimately see no yeah i mean i'm excited um i still want to see exactly what playstation is gonna you know bring to the table um right now again xbox has been you know, marching forward and trying to get everything, you know, set for this stage and for this new generation. And you know, I'm 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 gonna say it. They are currently killing it. Oh yeah, no, they're they're doing great so far. Like, Cause they've don't get started- me wrong, I, oh, yeah. I I do fear for how PlayStation is gonna handle um, the competition currently oh, yeah. from Xbox. Oh yeah, because they're already showing. Um, games that are going to be smart deliveries they're already going to sh- they're already showing some of the games that were already going to come into games pass you know for this new generation um i wish they would have shown a little bit more games than what they did because they were kind of limited with the amount of games that they actually showed um i which- mean they showed dirt 5 which looked really cool yep i mean it's your, it's your typical dirt game for anybody who's played dirt before so there's there's really nothing that seemed too out of there I mean, of course, they're going to be taking advantage of the ray tracing and that sort of thing, so that's good. But um, the Scorn... down. <laughs> was <laughs> um, here. I'll, I'll I will do medium. Good. How's that? Better. Right, cool. <clears throat> we'll yeah. do medium. All right. Um, they had Scorn, which was uh, interesting. Like it that was... one was very Last of Us to an extent. Like. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, and I, to be honest, I came out of this um, showcase wanting, for the most part, almost every single game that they had to show. Um, what else did they have? I mean, they had a chorus, which also looked pretty awesome. They had Vampire, um, Masquerade, Bloodlines 2. They had Madden, which, of course, does not really interest me. Uh, they had a game <laughs> called The Medium, where you're basically stranded between the real world and then this horror-filled uh, or other world uh, where you're solving a child's murder, uh, as I'm getting murdered. <laughs> they showed more footage, like you mentioned, of Assassin's Creed of Valhalla. Uh, but, of course, you know, nothing too super major or whatever. But, yeah, I mean, it, it was... It was a good conference, or it was a good showcase, or whatever you want to call it. I um, I look forward to seeing more for sure. You yeah. must survive, Ricky. <laughs> oh, you died again? <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, I died again. I'm here, like you know, making sure we're hitting certain points and you know different <laughs> things. So. <clears throat> Dude, chorus looked awesome. Like, let me tell you, I think that that one. I believe that uh, was it that one. Uh, I mean, there are the one that awesome. was like the, the one that was like the plane. You know what I mean? And it looked like you, you, you're basically the sentient plane, and you're just flying around. And yeah, it looked awesome. Oh yeah, right? of course. That's the one I want. Yes, of course I want that one. And you know, it would make sense. But it, it, they actually looked really, really good. Call of the Sea looked like a beautiful game, but I, I still don't really know what it is. It looks like it's kind of like lost in blue, like you're trying to survive on a deserted island or something. That's kind of the vibe that it gives me, but, you know. Yeah, because it was talking about, hey, you know, friend, come join me in exploring this new world. But it, it, it looked fairly interesting because at points they show, like, human hands, and then out of nowhere you have, like, this... um reptilian sea monster style hands if that makes sense yeah but i mean it, it, it 
art wise it looked beautiful it very colorful very vibrant um again just just waiting to see what else you know they're gonna be showing can't wait for july i will say that yeah that's gonna be very interesting to see what they come up with i i don't know man it's it's becoming harder and harder to not want to also get an xbox <laughs> like it's, it really is it really is becoming one of those scenarios where it's like well you guys are offering quite a significant amount of stuff yeah no so maybe just <laughs> maybe I mean, they already got me on the Games Pass for PC. Granted, it's it's not too much right now. It's like six bucks um, for the month just for the PC uh, pass. Gotcha. So you know, not too bad. But you know, especially I mean, when you think about the fact that for fifteen, I could theoretically have access to all the games on console plus on PC yep. uh, plus you know whatever other character um, or whatever the DLC and stuff that may be available sometimes in some cases through games pass or whatever no yeah i mean i i once i was done watching um the showcase i for the most part turned around and was like okay babe i need to get an xbox i really, <laughs> I really left like those trailers they you know yes again cinematic trailers they were still fairly detailed um to a possible you know at least the concept of the games that they were showing and how they were showing it you know caught my attention i honestly like i said you know a moment ago i i came out of it thinking of damn there's really not one game in here that i would not pick up well that's good man like i said it 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 really does want to make me buy an xbox man i really i really am enjoying it you know i i i don't know they're they're doing things right and it, Right now, I really do. I really am kind of fearful for PlayStation simply because there, there's nothing, man. Like there's there's no information. There's there's very little information happening right now. Um, I think like the most information we received lately from uh, PlayStation has been the new release date for The Last of Us. Um, and what what was the other game? I can't remember right now. Uh, I, think- I honestly, I don't. I haven't kept up with. Um- playstation as of lately i've been kind of disappointed with them with their lack of information but i just want to see when they're going to finally announce something else well what do you think that is uh at this point you know we're talking about xbox Cause like, we're already we're already in may yeah no xbox is talking about they're going to do their stages on july or at least more information in july you know, PlayStation, if they have some sense, I'm hoping it's, you know, not far after or, you know, somewhere before. It would but, be nice if they were to come up with something before. But to be honest, to me, I believe they're probably going to be at the tail end. They're probably trying to see exactly what PlayStation or Xbox has to offer before they come out. I don't know if they're trying to get a strategic plan of, okay, this is what, you know, so far we know Xbox is coming out with. You know, here's what we got. Because yeah. at, at this time, they still have time to, you know, change whatever plans they had and say, you know, I want I want this in, my, in this generation versus, you know, not. You know, this is what Xbox is doing. Let's, you know, let's do something similar. Let's do it a step better. They currently have that advantage. Um, hopefully, they're using all of this time to their benefits. But again, we'll see at the end. Damn. Oh man, PlayStation, PlayStation! If you're listening, please put something out. We need, we need more information. I just, I, I need to know. I need to know how much. It, it, it's you know. So many unanswered questions, man. So many unanswered questions. But you know what I also love, Ricky? What do you love? I Me? love my rumors. Well, I do, I do love you, but I do <laughs> love my rumors. Too. And, I, and there's a new rumor for the Switch, um, which is not, it is not your Xbox Switch before you even get onto that. Oh, I know. Um, but it is a, a rumor uh, for the patent for a du- dual screen support or a new... 
it, it's kind of confusing because in some articles I've read it as this is a brand new switch that is, you know, allegedly coming out. In others, I've read it as in like this is just a software update that is going to allow your switch to, you know, use a secondary switch as a potential second TV source or a second screen, um, which would potentially be awesome for, you know, the ports of those, you know, 3DS games or whatever the DS games. Uh, simply because all of those games were designed with dual screen support, so that would be cool. But well, what do you think? Like, do you think there's any credence to this? Do you think that is, is Nintendo doing this? You know, new skew for a console that is gonna potentially have two screens? Honestly, I was thinking about it, and I was going over some of the articles. Uh, I don't know if by adding a second screen, because let's be honest, you know. Yes, right now the Switch is fairly, you know, compact and it's pretty much portable. Add a second screen to this highly large um, portable item, you know, and to make a good quality second screen, it's going to have to be at least similar to the same size to the one that's currently on the Switch. You know, another seven-inch screen. So you're talking mm-hmm. about you're carrying a one, oh, ugh, you're carrying around a 14-inch screen. You know, you have a higher chance of dropping it or getting the second, you know, thing damaged. But again, it'll it'll be interesting. But I don't know. To me, it'll be too bulky. Um, could this be an answer to what they're, you know? with their current switch lineup with the new uh, version of it where you don't have a docking station so you're not able to ex you know export your video out into your tv at this time because it is currently 100%. Oh, I mean the, the switch light yeah it is currently 100 percent just handheld um it could be a you know a response to that to try to make it you know to where you can kind of display your your video out um but i don't know it would be interesting um again i go back i i hope it's not i don't know man i just i don't want the switch to go the way of the ds where there's like a constant upgrade every two to three years and then you have to buy the new uh upgrade because the the games work with the new system but not the new new system so you need to make sure that it works with the new new system not the new 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 system and the possibility of the old system you know what I mean? Like, it gets convoluted after a little bit. So I, that, that's kind of what I'm hoping it doesn't get to in terms of the Switch. Um, but I do love the ability for dual screen support and what that could mean. Oh, yeah. Now imagine if you can connect the Switch. Now that I'm off that little softbox, now imagine you can connect the Switch to your TV, be able to play the game through your TV, but still physically use the Switch as a second <clears throat> um, you know as your second visual uh, mm-hmm. screen for like maps or anything that you want to use you know extra feature wise cool. that'd be pretty cool you know where i know the wii u they attempted it to where you can play the game you know on the tv but you know your your wii u remote special large item was a secondary screen, you know, for like map systems, your menus, and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So that's that's a feature that I'm I can kind of see it as where it really won't be too crazy. Um, but again, it's just learning on how they're gonna be able to have that connectivity. Because, you know, by my understanding, going to the Switch Lite, you know, they wanted to reduce the price and additional gadgets needed to be able to, you know, play that kind of stuff. So, No, you're accurate. Oh, man. Did you also see that? (laughs) Cyberpunk. First of all. I still want that Xbox, right? I still want that Xbox, the Cyberpunk Special Edition Xbox. And also, and I, f- I forgot to mention it, the si- the, the Xbox uh, Special Edition, Assassin's Creed, Valhalla, whatever it is, I don't know if it was just a mock-up. I don't know if it's an actual console. 
I've been trying to look up more information on it to try to pre-order. I, I have not been able to see it. But, oh, my God, was that beautiful. Mm-hmm. And the cyberpunk <laughs> concert, oh, my God, are those beautiful or what? I, I would 1,000% buy those consoles. Um, on that note, and with that said, did you see the latest regarding yes. cyberpunk? Yes. I, go ahead, Ricky. For, for, our, for our listeners who may not be aware, Ricky, what are they doing? Well, apparently uh, cyberpunk is suffering from rectal dysfunction. <laughs> <laughs> So they're going to try, you know, to accommodate you to be able to have a larger genitalia and customize your genitalia area um, to your choosing. Who, who doesn't want to play a futuristic <laughs> game where you can replace body parts with cybernetics and on top of it mess with your genitalia? Of course that's what you want. Well, one of the th- that, That's what the kids want. There's a survey oh, yeah. out there and that's everybody oh, yeah. wants a bigger penis. No, yeah, no, but I, I did read more into it. Um, cyberpunk does um stay away from gender specific um characters. They're actually going to give you the option to 100% customize your character. If you want to have a male um style character, um, but you want it to have breasts or a bigger buttocks or a larger genitalia or a smaller genitalia you know you never know preference <laughs> you know they're they're gonna 100 percent allow you to customize your character um to your choosing you know however you want to you know to show off your character which it kind of makes sense in the style of game that they're trying to build um just because if you think about it you know they are modifying genetic humans with cybernetic um parts you know into into the human body so why not so what you're saying is why not become a personal vibrator yeah yeah i mean i mean it, it makes sense Just and yeah I, I i i get it but like is it needed is where i'm coming no, from i mean it's definitely this is akin, not needed this is akin to the whole scenario with red dead redemption and they're like we animated the horse testicles to shrink when the water is cold. I don't give a damn. I don't <laughs> give a damn about the horse testicles. I'm not sitting there wondering whether the testicles have real world mechanics. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh, get out of that dome. Uh, so, you know, it was, it was kind of unneeded, but, you know, uh, no park, I, boom. I honestly want to be one of those people, you know, one of those fly on the wall, you know, to, to be in part of those meetings or be a part of those meetings you know it's like oh gosh you know let's come in you know let's come with a decision what should we add that it has not been done into a game as of yet oh i got one let's add you know genitalia modifications when you get to choose your own style genitalia <laughs> I, I don't know what i like best the fact that you came up with a justification as to why they would do that or the fact that you came up with a voice for how this person <laughs> sounded during the meeting, where this decision was made to, yep, yeah, let's let's give them customizable genitalia. I mean, I mean, it. I don't know, dude. Like somebody, I don't know what Once they were thinking. Told somebody me was the high. World was gonna was like, me. Somebody was fucking high for you know to come. I was like, oh yeah, genitalia notifications done. Let's do it. What happened? Did you get another scorpion? A frog. <clears throat> you got a frog? Nice. <laughs> My wife is next to me playing Animal Crossing, so we have a problem, right? Don't judge us. Animal <laughs> Crossing has taken over my life. I don't know if you saw, Ricky. I've been working on a forced perspective uh, mountain view from my Animal Crossing village. Uh, I posted that. I think I tried to post it in the group. I don't know if I managed to post it in the group. I know that I posted it on my personal Facebook, and I will eventually make sure it gets to the group. Um, but yeah, dude, it, it's it's pretty cool, man. Because like, there's the way that they animated um, the game. It lends itself so that even though you're technically right there, th- it creates a visual effect that part of your island you can sculpt it in a way that it makes it look like you're overseeing a mountaintop so rather than being you know this like 
you know, three level island it gives it a lot more depth and makes it seem like a lot bigger scale. Uh, simply because I, I've put in like a couple of <clears throat> decorations and like little cars and it, it makes it look like there's like a little road uh, and a little diner where people are eating and stuff, you know, off this side of the mountain. So it looks pretty cool. I'm actually very proud of it. Um, I'm not going to stop bragging about it. So, oh, well, <laughs> <clears throat> Don't be prepared, be prepared to keep listening to me uh, over the next couple of episodes about my forced perspective mountain side view. I am, as I mentioned, extremely proud of it, unlike how badly I'm playing in Risk of Rain 2 tonight. Uh, for some reason, every single time we play Risk of Rain... And Whenever we play when we're recording, it goes terribly wrong. It really well, does. Either, either our playing goes terribly wrong or the recording goes terribly wrong. <laughs> At this point, I'd rather, I'd rather the gameplay go wrong. I'm cool with the gameplay going wrong. Uh, well, what, do you, what are you wooing about over there? Nothing. Uh, just... Just laughing because if it ain't one thing, it's another. No, I mean, but, you know, that's, that's life. Got life brother. That's life. Um, I'm just been enjoying. I will say, I ha- I have been enjoying, you know, playing video games during this quarantine. I've actually gone, <laughs> you know, out of not really out of my way, but I've given other games a chance. You know, games that wouldn't normally be part of your wheelhouse. Yes. Fair enough. You know. Um, Did you find any gems? Anything that you would like highly recommend where you're like, you know what? I've never heard of this game. Uh, the name or, or possibly even the name sounds dumb. But when you play it, this is amazing. Uh, Journey to a Savage Planet. Really? Yes. I, know, I mean, I personally know because you've been telling me since you started playing it. But, like, you know, share with us why. Like, what, what makes that game... Um, the eight game for you where you're like yep this is it to me it was you know it was a simple game um it wasn't too difficult it's a beautifully animated because it is a cartoon style um design to it um you Mm. had fairly cute creatures um the gameplay on it, you know, there. I'm, I'm assuming there's multiple levels. I didn't get too into it, um, but the way that they created some of the creatures are were pretty creative. Um, what was another? What do you mean? How so? The way they created the creatures. So okay, so there is like a boomerang, a boomerang bat. Um, basically it's like a bat that flies and attacks you as a boomerang style flying at you. Um, there is like a weird jumping frog style monster. There's like a blob, funny looking monster. And aside of all of that, the game has its own sense of humor. Um, for example... Uh, once I got to the end of the game, you know, one of the comments that this floating robot that's with me told me was like, oh, I did not expect for you to have, um, to have made it this far just because we don't have enough, you know, goop to continue regenerating your body because... Apparently. Okay, that that sounds all sorts of weird and all sorts of wrong. We don't have enough gook to repair your body. That sounds terrible. Well, it's not a reanimate your body because the yeah, theme, I know the, what you mean. The theme of the game is once you're dead, your body is dead. All they do is just transfer all your memories into another clone of your body. And every single time you go into a clone of your body, basically you lose 10% of your memory. So, in other words, if you die about 40 times, you're pretty much... You're just basically a a (laughs) rock at that point. Yes. Um, So, yeah. So, and then, of course, the bodies that when you die, they actually stay in the world. And once you find your body... You're, they give you the option of shamefully hide, you know, or shamefully dig your body or shamefully hide your body. 
under the you know under the dirt and once you do that it gives you like a little shrine and it gives you um like additional perks not perks but like um credits and whatnot to continue leveling up your character um i mean it's a really fun game it it's it's a little hard to explain fair enough man you know you go around the world scanning the world you know leveling up your characters you know you have certain tasks that you have to do to be able to move up um you don't have to do every single task to finish the game but it's recommended if you want to play the game at an easier pace hmm that okay fair enough Sounds a little confusing at the end. Do you have to finish it in the hardest mode to get the easiest? Well, for example, you can go through the world grabbing several blobs of orange blobs that you eat. And it basically infuses into your body and your health grows. Your health bar grows and your stamina grows. Um, mm. And there's about a thousand of them throughout the, throughout the world. Or no, I'm lying. There's a hundred of them throughout the world. Um, it's completely up to you if you want to, you know, if you want to grab it. There's nothing that makes you do anything in the game. You go either you play the game and do the story from beginning to end with no upgrades and just a simple pistol with a very long um, reload time. Or you can just go ahead and, you know, scavenge the world and explore it and you know, make your health bar go fully activated and your stamina, you know, your how many items you can carry because, you know, in the long run, you are going to need items to get through certain levels. Um, you start off with only able to carry three items at a time and then you upgrade to a five um, pocket and then to a ten um, item maximum carry. Mm -hmm. So... To me, I found, you know, the three, the the bag that I can only carry three items at a time, it's not enough for some of the tasks that you have to do. It's possible to finish the game, but it's more difficult to finish the game that way um, versus being able to carry more items on you. Uh, obviously, your health bar, you know, just degenerates faster if it's a smaller health bar compared to a larger health bar. Um, which makes the game, you know, a level of more difficulties because now you just have to constantly maintain your health bar up versus just focusing on the game and, you know, being okay with getting hit several times and still be able to play the game with no issues. If that makes sense. Oh, no, it does. I'm just at this point trying to survive this. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. And then I, I also tried my friend Pedro. Oh, how did you like that one? It's pretty interesting. It, it's a game that I was not expecting. Why? Uh, or, I mean, or to what I, extent not expecting? I, well, I guess I was expecting to be a banana. Just because. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> if that may, I mean. No, I, I, can, I can understand. You're not actually a banana, which actually I was a little disappointed. <laughs> I was not a banana. I was looking forward to being a banana. There'll, there'll be other opportunities. <laughs> All right. Well, that that pretty much does it for our episode for this week. Um, is there anything else you'd like to plug, Ricky? Anything you want to say to our listening audience out there? No, just stay safe. You know, have fun. Um, use this time to be able to play other video games that you probably wouldn't have before. Knock um, out that back catalog. Yeah, knock off your back backup catalog that you've had that you have not been able to play. I mean, just try new things, you know? There's a lot of things that you can do at home. I thought you were going to start listing them or something. But yeah, yeah, there is a lot no, of no. things you can do at home. <laughs> no. Figure them out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
All right. Well, everybody, that does it for this episode. Once again, thank you for joining us in this episode of Chairside Gaming. Chairside Gaming goes live every two weeks on podcast services and YouTube uh, all over the place. So please go check it out. If you're checking us out on YouTube, make sure that you like, subscribe, and press that little bell so you see when you get the new episodes. If you are checking us out on uh, podcast service, make sure you like and rate us on those because that's what helps us get more listeners. To those of you who have done that over the uh, course of the past couple of weeks, thank you so much. We can already see the significant changes. Um, so for anybody who has not done so, please go ahead and do that. It really, really does do a lot to help us. Uh, so thank you so much for everybody who's done that so far. Uh, is there anything I'm missing, Ricky? Uh, no, you pretty much mentioned everything. Um, you can find me at Big Gamer Net on Twitter yep. and Vixen. Vixen on me, for me. Uh, and then obviously you can follow us at Geek and Cast. Also check out the website, Geek and uh, cast.com. And then also for anybody who does not listen, I'm going to, I've been pimping, I've been pimping our show and the other show. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Heck yeah. So. <clears throat> For anybody who doesn't know, Geek and Cast is it's a small network that we have, and of course we have shows that we're developing and shows that we have already out. And we do have another podcast called Control C, and that's like Control C, like the the, the computer prompt. So C T R L C, uh, and, and basically we discuss movies on that one. I've been <laughs> over the last couple of episodes. I'm like. So on my episode uh, of you know Chairs Head Gaming, <laughs> I'm just like <laughs> it out and. Control C keeps looking at me like seriously. Are, you better be pimping out our show. So you know, I'm I'm gonna pimp out Control C on this episode. So if you have not checked out that podcast, go subscribe to that one too, because that one's that one's actually had had an uptick. So if you listen to both, thank you also for for rating us and stuff on that one. That one's seen some some nice uh, uptick in activity. So thank you so much uh, for everybody. Uh, thank you once again, everybody. We'll see we'll see you next time. I think. I have a uh, Ricky. We'll, we'll we'll discuss something. I wanna I wanna do for next episode. Uh, it has ideas. Oh, he has ideas. Everybody be scared. It has ideas. Everybody be scared. Everybody All be right. scared. See you guys next time. Dos tiros en queso. Luego. <laughs> Dos tiros en queso. <laughs> 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 <laughs>